東京放課後サモナーズ月の光のない場所を一人で歩かない方がいいだって怖い誰かに食べられちゃうよ Hey everyone, I will be playing chapter 10. Where we last left off almost a year ago,、uh, we discovered all sorts of、uh, singing mabobs.、Uh, I guess, spoiler alert for those who haven't seen chapter 9. We discovered our sort of past loop selves or something, I think. Or may maybe it was the souls. We, we just began communicating with the souls inside the protagonist.、Uh, some other revelations happened, I believe,、uh, with the crafters that just finished up. Uh, inside the wall, part one. Chapter ten Warmongers Overture Smoke on the Front Lines. Oh. So. So we're in perspective of someone who just walked into jail. And we are introduced by Infernal Giant. Well, look at this. Fresh meat. Pretty damn good, young and tender at that. You got a name, kid? Wait. What? <laughs> Why am I in jail? <laughs> Uh, I guess it's never been perspective of anyone else other than my,、uh, the protagonist. Gee. Yeah. <laughs> We got some life in this one. You're gonna be a riot. Hey, you must have done something very bad. Something very bad to get back up in this, this land with us. Care to tell us about it, kid? Hmm. It's kind of a long story. Thought bubble time. Oh, that's a new filter. Take your seats, everyone. As you all know, this is the last day of school. So there are some things we'd like to discuss before you head home for the holidays. Huh? How come we got Mr. Gene and Mr. Treaton today? Yeah, where's Mr. Mononobe? Now that you mention it, I haven't seen him all day. Hey, Teach, what gives? Mr. Mononobe is、uh, taking a leave of absence, so I'll be taking over his duties for a while. But don't worry, he'll be back before you know it. Hmm, so that means. What happened was Mr. Nobi lost him? Oh, yeah, we,、uh, he like showed the, his pentagram on the back of his hand mysteriously.、Uh, which I think it matched our own summary mark.、Um, Mr. Treaton, I need to ask you something.、Yeah. Mm, what's wrong, Harrison? Is Mr. Nobi really coming back? You sure nothing's happened to him? How do you? Do you also know something about. <clears throat> A moment, Mr. Gene. Ah,、uh, Mr. Treaton. Uh, of course. I'm afraid we cannot tell you any more than we already have. However, there is no cause for concern. I have every confidence that Mr. Mononobe will return to Shinjuku Academy in due time. I assure you, he will be back in front of that blackboard again very soon. Hmm. In the meantime, the best thing you can do is to continue your studies as normal. Can you do that for me? Hmm. <laughs> Rub your ring. Little Solomon, I need you. Rub your ring. Um, yeah, so in the previous chapter, we learned about、uh, how Solomon was actually. What was it? Was, was, was he like a, a gift from Mr. No, Mononobe? At least that's what was applied to the summoner himself. And he's unique in this loop.、Uh, you know, a loop being a repetition of the entire、uh, world's events.、Uh, so far, there have been like some countless number of hopeless loops where the protagonist was、uh, incessantly slaughtered. 
uh, by some different person each time. And in this case, we're playing through a history where things are a bit different because Lil Solomon seems to be in unique existence in this one. Oh, well, if it isn't my master, something you need for the little old me? Though Solomon answers your call, springing forth, not from the app, but from the ring sitting snugly on your finger. I forgot what the deal with the ring is, honestly. Did he give him to him in the end or something? Uh, I don't know, but uh, Solomon's existence is a... I don't know, he, I don't know. He, he's still kind of a mystery, but now we're at more openly in speaking terms. Hmm, so, what'd you think? Hopefully your search went better than mine. Is he really not here? Ah, not a hair, not a whisper, not even the tiniest sniff. Father's nowhere in the school. I don't think he's even in Shinjuku. Uh, you don't think? He hasn't really got enough to poor little someone alone, has he? Hmm, your father, eh? How long were you reporting to him? Just how much did he know? Uh, master? Just so you know, I didn't want to keep all this a secret from you. But if it weren't for father, you never would have met your favorite old fluffy level 3 detective master. Chan cha But yeah, uh, we- what's it called? His relationship with his uh, father, aka Mr. Mononobi, is also unclear. Uh, in the very least though, uh, we made a pact with Solomon to communicate with him more openly. Uh, hopefully he'll feed us more details, but uh, of course, most, uh, since this is someone's first loop, he also seems not to be really in a know of things. Father was the one who told me I needn't serve you and led me, uh, me to you that day in Shinjuku Central Park. He's the whole reason he even called me master. He must have had a good reason for what he did. I'd stick my baller to home on it. You don't know how many times I saw him get out of his way to help others. You've got to believe in Master! Uh, I'm begging you! Flashbacks to improve the uh, Shinjuku Park graphics. <laughs> mm. Don't worry, I know. If you haven't been there to help me, who knows what could have happened. Also, for some reason, it seems more higher definition than when I first saw it. Oh, Master! Mm. I don't know why he kept those secrets. But I'm sure we'll get to that in time. First, let's find your teacher. Roger that, Master! Your face old butler was right behind you! Sha-sha! Arushi Saba! Now, if only he had some clues. Maybe he left us uh, something for us. How did he use to contact him? Hmm. Well, Lori would always tell me exactly where father was. 24-7. Until now. Well, someone's gestures to the golden ring that I wear. Oh, that's right. I found this in the old school building. They were reunited. I literally do not remember that, but sure. That ring! It used to belong to father. Oh, just why you have it now is a total mystery. This is too much for your poor little um, butler's brain, master. Mm, it looks just like yours. You know, the one on your horn. Sure does. That's because they're the same. Hmm. Though someone taps the ring resting on the stubby horn with a furry paw. One horn is the one from your world, Master. This one's a bit like the sh shadow that yours casts on my world. There are two rings set. Mine always knows where yours is, so I can bubble straight to you no matter where you are. <laughs> bubble. <laughs> hmm, yep. I'm so clueless. So there are like two but one, right? It's not a capital S shadow, is it? <laughs> now that father has given it up, I can't use it to tell where he is anymore. Wait, now that you think about it... Capital S shadow. Uh, shadows were pervasive in events, but I don't remember a shadow actually being present <laughs> in uh, this game. Well, actually, never mind. I, I guess uh, Chino was and uh, Hanuman's shadow, as well as uh, Akumin's... Uh, what her face was. <laughs> Why, Father? Why didn't you tell your lovable little Solomon anything? Mm, we can't do much without any clues. Maybe someone saw whatever happened. I think we have other problems. 
You have that master? Have you got that mail? No, it's a message from Cheryl. All right, let's head to the safe house. Must be news from the front lines. Welcome back. It's nice to see you, Arthur. Nice to see you too, Shiro. So, where's everyone else? The others have been dispatched to Ikabukuro, Ayama, and Roppongi to help the other guilds weather the onslaught. Kango and Moritaka are aiding berserkers, and the rest are split between the missionaries and the tycoons. Yeah, that's right. We In the previous chapter, we saw like an inv individual episode of each person from the summoners going to each guild, I guess, to kind of recruit them for what seems to be some kind of a... We made a guild alliance with Shuichi, and maybe we're going to fight back against Loop. It was kind of ambiguous our goal was, or maybe that's just makes sense for not remembering. Uh, yeah. So, I, I believe Ryoto went to the missionaries, of course, and Kengo went to the Berserkers. We saw Claude, and uh, they talked about some hidden thing with that uh, duo was hiding there. Uh, in the missionaries, we saw a preview of Gandarba appearing. Maria also learned about the thingy of Bob's, the implanted memories, I think, through her ability. Leaked and the tycoons also had their own methods of uh, communicating what they wanted to do uh, with Toji. And they actually need to stop to be able to uh, eliminate the, the source of uh, disinformation and uh, memory manipulation that was happening among them. It's only the two of us. Sorry, I mean the three of us left. Biological scan complete. Probability of falsification 0.2%. Identity confirmed. Greetings, good master. Doing UKR 19? Gotten used to the place yet? Are you okay with speaking a bit less creepily? Affirmative. Except for that last point. Accommodation quality as adequate. Self-repair status. Proceeding without incident. Conclusion. I am satisfied. Mm, you're certainly looking in better shape now than when Kango and I first brought you here. And to be honest, I am glad we did. I'll explain later, but we'd really have been at a loss if he hadn't come along. The outlaws wanted you to come with us, right? It was Suzuki and Suzuka, wasn't it? Okay, so everyone's up to speed now with everything. Affirmative. I am a reconnaissance unit from Utopia. Prime directive. Collecting data from the sites of battle across Tokyo. Hmm. But a setback occurred. Apprehension and incarceration by another faction. Completing my objective became impossible. You were captured? On Earth? Through the intervention of an unknown benefactor, I escaped the confinement and sought refuge in Kabukicho. He was then asked to come with us by Sukiyomi, acting guild master of the outlaws. And so, here we are. Hmm, so the outlaws took you in. And then they just gave you away? Something's a bit odd here. I concur. The outlaws can be insular at times, but turning away from somebody who has nowhere else to go would violate their principles. Usually, I would expect them to harbor someone like R19 in their headquarters. However, with the benefit of hindsight, it seems our friend here has left Kabukicho in time. Hmm? What do you mean? What happened to Kabukicho? The Berserkos have requested a video conference with us to discuss this very topic. Uh, what happened to the outlaws? Well, I'm sure their lives since chapter 11 shows what's her face. Ellie, who is the guild master of that? Hmm. R19, can you bring it up? Just the same as always. Understood. Establishing connection to Ikabukuro. Connection established. Deploying projector. A strange device springs out of R19's outstretched arm and projects the holographic display in midair. Hey, it's working. Wish my arm did that. <laughs> Apparently, our 19's body comes fully equipped with an internal power generator and communications device. You're going to be an invaluable ally, R19. We're really lucky to have you. Response. I am pleased with that my functionality is of service to you, Shiro. Despite Shiro's heartfelt comment, our 19's voice lacks the barest trace of emotion. Let us begin our summit, our dear gladiator. Please forgive us for us chewing our direct meeting. But circumstances, being what they are, 
We cannot afford to reveal our exact location. We hope you understand. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you're safe, though, Claude. Let's get started. Alrighty, Shiro. Yes. Claude, Snow, let's begin. First, allow us to explain the Berserker's current situation. We have been under attack by an unknown guild for several days and are currently lying low in the Ikebukuro Labyrinth. Okay, so it seems the Berserkers have uh, resolved after becoming dissolved. <laughs> I mean, I guess they, they would never really broke their bonds at, even if they were ambushed at one time. I think they were ambushed, something like that. But there's, uh, yeah, their headquarters were in their portal was kind of taken over at some point. But that was just, you know, under the records. I guess by spirit, the Berserkers are still running strong. At present, we cannot even contact our rankers, the backbone of our guild. We have been re receiving... We have been receiving some reports from the missionaries and tycoons. It seems that the situation is bad everywhere. Our chain of command is in tatters, I fear. And now we are being picked off one by one. I have some important information to share on that point. It appears that Kabiki Cho's outlaws, portals, and safe houses have been systematically raided by the police. While a small number of guild members have escaped and gone into hiding, many have been apprehended and detained. Is that so? The outlaws, too, have been in quite a similar predicament as of late, it seems. Wait. You've been raided, too? My sources tell me that the missionaries and the tycoons have met near identical fates. No, no. Well, we already knew about the missionaries. Uh, I figured the tycoons would stave off the, the opposing force with their money or something. <laughs> the charitable nonprofits that uh, the charitable nonprofits that back the missionaries have been hit with spontaneous inspections from the Metropolitan Police and the Public Pr Prosecutor's Office. Hold on, I need to read that again. That was that's too long. The charitable nonprofits that back the missionaries have been hit with the uh, spontaneous instructions by Trump bomb, please, and the other thing. Oh, I see. So it's a uh, organization kind of a uh, fall fallouts. As of the corporations all across with Pongi with ties to tycoons, the timing matches almost perfectly. In all cases, the police apprehended and detained a portion of the staff on clearly spurious charges. All of the guild's inquiries and their missing members are being stonewalled, I assume. Correct. I see that you have experienced this firsthand as well. What a mess. Forget about guild battles. At this rate, the guilds themselves will collapse. We will speak frankly. With the exceptions of the summoners, this offensive has severely crippled every guild in the city. How come we've been spared? Are they really avoiding us? That would be, seem to be the case. For some reason, the summoners and our portal haven't been touched at all. It's quite peculiar. It's probably related to me. That's the sole reason we've been able to spare Kengo and Moritaka to help out at your end. Furthermore, it becomes apparent that wherever either of them goes, the police pull out. Huh. This seems to confirm my hypothesis that the aggressors are de deliberately trying to avoid contact with their guild in particular. At first, I suspected that some kind of ploy to lull us into a false sense of security, but there's no longer any room for doubt. We recall our enemy describing our dear warrior as the ultimate prize in the battle consuming Tokyo. This belief was likely connected to their avoiding interfering with the summoners. And so, we propose that this constitutes a weakness that is ripe for your exploitation. Now that we know where our foe will not and cannot strike, the best course of action would be to use that knowledge against them. Dangerous, perhaps? But a faint heart number one. Very gladiator. Hmm. <laughs> but we don't know where they are. How can we bring the fight to them? A fine point, dear warrior. Our enemies conceal themselves and slept through our net like a mist. We are in no position to go on the offensive, especially while the Matarasu and Michael still guard the location of their portals. Or at least, we weren't. Until several days ago. Oh. What happened? You mean the incident in Kamata?
where Omri Tigris supposedly shows up to, you know, end the not so unusual territory, as Atlan Quest says. To sum up, the crafters are attacked by a mysterious band of luchadors commanded by a transient named Omri Tigre. These aggressors identified themselves as a member of a guild called the Warmongers. Finally, this Omri Tigre gave his orders under the control of Tiskatlipoka, a world of spent representative. Are we correct so far, Arthen? So far, so good. They didn't exactly hide their identity. That kind of makes me wonder if it was a trick. Very not, dear warrior. The warmongers certainly exist, although they carefully keep their location of their inner circle a secret. However, just one face or an one name can provide us with the opening we need to strike. Our foe may be cautious, but Tokyo is vast. They cannot possibly erase every trace of their presence. Accordingly, we have gathered all possible data from every security camera information that occurred in the city. <laughs> that was fast. Then cross-reference it with what we know about the Scotly Pokemon. And it paid off. Finally, we have a lead. Mm, tell me the details, Shiro. How do you do it? <laughs> I'm flattered, but this is far beyond my capabilities. Ah, so we, we, did we use uh, Shuichi's help? You should thank R19. See? Invalidable, just like I told you. Hmm. Affirmative. Cyborgs such as I are optimal for operations such as that. Ah, uh, that's super cool, I guess. Thanks to our 19's efforts, we have finally located one of the leaders of the Warmongers. We have discovered that Tesla resides in Narima Ward. Narima, huh? That's at the very west of Tokyo, right? Is something special there? Perhaps you are unaware, but Narima was once the site of a correctional facility designed specifically for transients. In other words, it was one of those uh, refugee encampment spots. The site has recently been built and now performs its grim task once more. It is both a prison where warriors from other guilds are incarcerated without trial, and an educational facility where inmates are forcibly transferred and re educated as soldiers. It's called Penitential Academy. Hmm. This isn't right. You can't just lock others up. How's that allowed? Hmm. You're correct. It is highly unusual. And yet, from what I can gather, that's what is happening. No, well, it's been rather ideal in terms of its uh, systems so far in Tokyo for a very localized situation with a bunch of aliens coming to the world. It's, this is probably the most uh, natural thing I could expect at this point. A question for you. Who has the authority to issue arrest warrants in Tokyo? The answer is the Metropolitan Police, the Public Prosecutor's Office, and the so-called Special Judicial Constabulary. Those exact organizations have been conducting raids against the Ikebukuro, Ayayama, and Rupangi guilds. I was as astonished as you are, but Claude and Stowe are experts in this field, and the evidence seems to support their theories. Of course. Most Tokyoites will blissfully be unaware that this is happening. In recent days, most police and PPO branches have been closed, and a new slew of ones established. And what do you suppose connects individuals making up the new administration? Uh, is it is it is it the warmongers? All three branches of. Uh, all three branches of Tokyo's governments are now firmly under the control of the three true guilds. Hmm. Oh, that's pretty bad, actually. <laughs> so, uh, they aren't just playing, like, underground to control Tokyo anymore. They are literally in the upper rungs of Tokyo's uh, government. Jeez. If only that were the end of it. The military, the police force, and even Tokyo's underground terrorist factions have all fallen. Hmm. In one fell swoop, these pretenders have split the city in three, each ruling its own share. Students from all across Tokyo are being detained in Penitentiary Academy and re-educated as soldiers. Even our anchors have not escaped their clutches. How could the police do that? There has been, of course, resistance from various factions within these organizations. However, from what we hear, 
Those responsible have been stripped of their authority, or else mysteriously disappeared. We should hardly be surprised. Our enemy does possess knowledge from previous loops. With access to such information, it's a mere child's play to predict who might act and when. Hmm. It was the same for R92. He was captured and was lucky enough to make an escape in the nick of time. Affirmative. My success escape was only possible through the aid of my benefactor. So, they've got the Berserkers. What about the Outlaws and Rest? And uh, what about your benefactor? These images detail personnel sighted in the vicinity of a police station we believe to be compromised. It is likely they have been apprehended and incarcerated already, although we cannot say where. R19 screen cycles through a series of mug shots. Oh, they got bad team? No. And Pollux? No, I'm sorry! <laughs> There's an Brian Rest. Oh, they, right, they have the outlaws too. Kyobu. Ibaraki. And Tetsubox. Hmm. Please be okay. Tetsuya. <laughs> they didn't even show Tetsuya in that one. Uh, familiar faces from Shinichiro Kapikicho and the Ikabukuro Coliseum appear one after the other on the screen. And finally... Oh, they've captured Mononobi? <laughs> Look! Arson! It's... The refraction makes it hard to tell, but it looks like Mr. Mononobi. What's he doing up mixed up on all this? Hmm. If you're wondering what the worst case scenario is, you're looking at it. Our backs are firmly against the wall. However, we have a trump card up our sleeve. A joker, if you will. A nice in the hole, an individual we know and we cannot possibly harm no matter how fiercely they rage. Oh, is it Makan? Well, let's say we take our chance to land our blow on them. Probably in Regal, like the Conquerors are- I, Wait, I've just seen her talking about me. <laughs> Why did he say Makan? <laughs> Our foe has had enough fun at our expense. It is time to bloody their nose a little. You can't be serious. Huh. Oh, but we are. We intend to launch an assault upon the Metropolitan Police. Narima time. Narima, narima, narima. Inside the wild part two. Uh, looks like we're playing with protagonist and Jacob. And, uh, what's his face? Robot kid. Robot kid. Uh, R19. The opening of the gates in 1999 AD was followed by a growing number of incidents involving transients. In response, a detention facility was established in western Tokyo. This place, where students involved with otherworldly incidents were housed, became known as a transient detention center. Okay, so this is before everything was lovey-dovey with all transients and there was actual conflict. The establishment of this facility. Few outside parties know that it has since been remade to serve a very different purpose. Nowadays, its grants are just indistinguishable from a military training facility. As it does every day, a transport bus pulls into the yard. Its door opens and a collection of bedraggled figures are let out. What? Is this place- Hey! Where have you taken us? Mm. What the hell's going on here, officer? Explain yourself! Weren't you supposed to be taking us to Coach Avarga? You show up at Yoyogi telling us he urgently needs to see us, but the moment we get in the police car, you jump us! Taurus Mask of the Berserkers, was it? Well, no worries. You'll see your coach soon enough. Taurus mask? How did you Um, huh? Wait, what are you? 
Taurus Mask watches Slackjawed as the police officers transform into amorphous pitch black shadows. I know you very well, Taurus Mask. More than you know yourself, even. What? Who are you? Come, Taurus Mask. Remember the myriad of foolish wars we fought where friend slew friend upon streets of Tokyo. An enormous mirror appears before Taurus Mask, a jet black surface polished to a sheen. The shadows then pin the young wrestler to the ground and drag his head up to stare into the depths of the mirror. No! Let me... What is this? There's something falling into my head. Something happening to Yoyogi Academy? Perhaps being called to be the sponsor for this year's anniversary? Memories flash through Taurus Mask's mind, memories of his friends at Yoyogi, in the times that he smiled, laughed, and cheered each other on. But slowly, the memories distort, their luster fades, and his friends' smiles take on an entirely different meaning. Mm. There's uh, Yasuyori. Warmongers Forward Command Post, Narima Ward. Now the Berserkers, with 60% of their rankers assimilated into our ranks, their dissolution is all but assured. Within the former Transient Detention Center lies the Warmongers uh, Forward Command Post, from which they coordinate their offensive. The Guild of Politicians and Warmongers ha has wasted no time turning this place into an entirely different purpose. It now exists as a facility for the housing, re-education, and training of the new recruits in the Warmongers' army, and preparation for the coming clash between the three two guilds. Superintendent Daikoku reports that the drive to bolster depleted forces is also proceeding smoothly. How goes the training for our current batch of notable recruits, Yasuyori? Thank you, Councillor Tanajama Nisaka. I, Surgeon Yasuyori Inuda, hereby present my report. As Sergeant Yasuyori concludes his report, the strategist, Tanatomo, gives a slightly impatient nod. So, in short, all is proceeding according to plan? Well, we should hardly be surprised. We already know every move our foes could possibly think of, while they are main ignorant of even of our existence. Uh, playing poker when you know your opponent's end is not a challenge, but merely a formality. As long as we three true guilds continue to monopolize knowledge of past loops, our only obstacles are each other. My strategic prowess as the wise ones will help guide us to victory against the invaders. Within Tanatomo's clothes, a small orb identical to those worn by Moritaka and Tadatomo glows with a symbol uh, for wisdom. I have every faith in you, Counselor. It is not for a foolish soldier to question your superiors. Yasuyori's orb also begins to glow, but his does it with a symbol for brotherhood, one of the three fundamental bonds. These are the Confucian virtues dictating one's duties to others. I know full well what follows when I act of my own accord. Memories flit through the hulking soldiers' minds, slick warmth beneath the sands, air heavy with a cloying stench of blood. Vivid memories of brutal, futile war that have finally returned to him, or rather, been returned to him. In his mind's eye, he fights to the death time and time again against those he once called friends. Those memories are endless, letting bear his own ugliest side over and over. Hmm. So he's complicit in this, reluctantly, but he is complicit. Every loop, he seems to regain his memories after befriending them. Not from the very beginning, he gained some memories, so it seems that he has mixed feelings about this. 
How could Yasuyori Inuta return to the living among his comrades, knowing the atrocities he has committed? Well, I guess that explains why he's never at Yoyogi. This wretched battlefront is the only fitting place for a monster like me. I no longer have any right to set foot in Yoyogi Academy. You needn't say it more, Yasuyori. I feel your pain as though it were my own. With my own hands, I plucked the lives of the traitors who slew my lord, and so was the cause of justice served. However, righteousness will not bring back the dead. My hands are stained as crimson as yours, Yasuyori. I know your pain well, and your emptiness too. We have sullied ourselves with mortal sin, and now we are sinners to the grave, doomed to rise vainly in the torment of living. Tanatomo. I mean, Counselor, my deepest apologies. Please, excuse my discourtesy. You need not concern yourself with formalities, Yasuyori. Call me by name, I pray. And if in my words you should spy any hint of falsehood, then please, by the name of Tanatomo Inusaka. Tanatomo proffers the hilt of a sword to Yasuyori. I beg you, run me through and put an end to this. Ugh. This is good. This is a bit fucked up. <laughs> Yasuyori sighs and then sinks into a deep bow. Wherever you go, I will follow, Counselor Inusaka. I have no intention of allowing you to dirty your hands alone. I thank you, Yasuyori. Now, let us speak to the business of dirtying your hands. If they follow the same patterns as in past loops, the summoners should soon begin to make their moves. I believe that we can leave the matter of their guildmaster to our commander. However, dealing with Moritaka Shino Inuzoka and Tadutomo Dosetsu Inuyama falls to us. As you command, cancel Inuzaka. Inuzuka, I will leave to you. We interact too poorly. I doubt it would be possible for me to defeat him. I, meanwhile, will be the one to face Unyama. I believe you would fare poorly against him for similar reasons. You know, attribute advantage, fire against wood, basic gameplay materials. Tanatone pronounces judgment upon former comrades with the same ease as delegating paperwork. Hmm. Although I cannot imagine that I have much to fear from our failed ninja. After all, he has yet to slay even one of his lord's killers. Oh. Tan and Tomo's lips pull into a smile, looking both innocent and beguiling all at once. Now, to work. Superintendent Daikoku should be arriving from Shinjuku shortly with our next batch of new recruits. Quantity is all well and good, but we should not neglect to cultivate their quality as well. I leave them to you, Yasuri. I trust you will raise them into warriors worthy of joining our ranks. Shinjuku Police Station, Shinjuku Ward. I can't move! Superintendent Daikaku, what is the meaning of this? I must say, I am very disappointed in you officers, and in most of all, you, Tajikaro. Should this happen so easy? I expect all of the agents of law to remain vigilant at all times, and yet the promise of a work dinner was all it took for you to drop your guards. Right not, for your loss will not mean fewer police officers on the street. Your replacements have already been chosen. A column of shadows files out from inside the buildings, each bearing the face of one of the officers lying immobilized. Hmm. Is that more of a Tascali uh Mr. K's smoke thing? <laughs> uh, impersonating other people. They face Daikaku solemnly and bow their heads as one, as though swearing fealty. Not for me! I must be saying things! From now on, the shadows will take over your duties. All is in service to cause the cause of the warmongers and their world representative, Mahakala. Hmm. 
You still got a lot to learn, kid. You fell for that one hook, line, and cigar. Thank you, sure. I'm moving quick this time around. Better settle in for the long haul, or I'm gonna be. Hmm? Well, now, I spy with my little eye. Shinjuku Police Station, Shinjuku Ward. Status update. We have arrived at our de destination, Shiro. So I see from your optic data. Cell will work, Hard 19. Now then, let us teach these warmongers a lesson or two. Hmm. Hold your horses. Isn't this a suicide? And how come Hard 19's here anyway? My current prime directive is the collection of data from the city's most hazardous locations. Conclusion. Our interests align. Accompanying you is the optimal course of action. What is the matter, dear gladiator? Does something give you pause? I'm gonna end up in a wanted poster. What about the officers inside? We see. If those are your fears, you may put them to rest. What do you mean? Almost all of the police officers in that building have long been replaced by imposters. You mean they're fakes? Dun, dun, dun. Lots hit the head on this one, Master. Remember those shadows he fought in Kabukicho? Well, those officers are just the same, just pieces of someone's memory. I could spot them anywhere, Master. I'm just the same. So, what happened to the real ones? What are the wrong workers done with them? Do not remember your battle against their vanguard in Kamata, dear warrior. Recall that purpose there. Recall what they sought to achieve. I don't really understand why they are there, but they, they, he caught them in us. They tried to control us through our memories of previous loops. Hmm. Indeed. What do you suppose it would do to someone to recall that they once fought to death with their dearest friends? The trauma soldiers are subjected to during warfare is so great that many never successfully readjust to normalcy. Some eventually return to the military service, but those who fail to find a place for themselves often meet tragic ends. As for the officers who have been taken, we can but hope for their safety. Hmm. What if that's what they're doing? To all the berserkers they've captured. As your conversation continues, a prison bus slows to a stop in front of the, the police station. Soon after, a chain of handcuffed students pile in one after the other until the, uh, the watchful Ivo Company police officers. Sorry, I just... The thought of... <laughs> it's such a unique form of a assault that I've never heard of before. Subjecting others to torture of... Like, making them remember how they volitionally hurt their friends. It's bring that tear to my eye. Walk straight to the bus and fill in from the back. Keep it quick and calm. No funny business. There are you playing at? You can't just grab folks off the street. I haven't done anything wrong. Screw this. One of the students loses their patience and shoves one of the police officers hard with their shoulders as they pass. Yeah! Did you see that? What the hell is that? The shadow's face turns blank, dropping all peat tents, and they roughly bundle the rest of the prisoners into the bus. Hey! Hey! You can't just take us away! Someone! Anyone! Help! They need us. They can't just sit and watch. After all, I maxed all the sacred ever faculty of last night. We shall ask for a final time, dear gladiator. Are you prepared for this battle? Our foes may be unwilling to face you of their own accord, but that does not mean they will not defend themselves. We remind you that you may still choose to do nothing and silently await the end. Such is your right. In doing so, however, Tokyo will most likely be condemned to yet another loop. Hmm. You'll preserve yourself from harm, but your memories, you will not. I'm making this loop the final one. Right, Lissalon? I promised you. Right! Don't you worry about a thing, Master. Just leave it to your cute little salmon. After all, this time we got a secret weapon up our sleeves. 
Huh? Who's that? Oh, it's <laughs> so that's how he shows up in that. He literally just walks into battle. Hold a moment, officer. I'm afraid I cannot stand by and condone such senseless violence. It seems that you can learn much from the mercy of the Lord. Who's this? Another recruit. Good time. Get him in the book. The shadows reach for the mysterious newcomer, but grasp only the empty air. He slips through their hands like falling leaf. You dare to defy the police, you miscreant. The shadow officers draw their weapons and leap for the hooded figure. As you wish, let us strike each other on the other cheek. And we will see who can t still turn the other when this is over. <laughs> The police officers are sent flying in the youth strike in this fate, as shadows dissipate in light. Who on earth is that? Hmm, that dear gladiator is... No time to waste, we've got to help. Here comes the cavalry! Uh, Uh, oh, cool. I have a four star protection. <laughs> I don't know why it took me like a hot second to realize that. Um, yeah, this is a shitty positioning. Oh, well, I'll just move in like, in like that. I would have liked to use Jacob's pull, but he was just not in position. Can I do it? Oh, pull him in. Just like that, yeah. This is a bit of a obligatory, uh, nondescript battle. <laughs> uh, he can pull them in, and I can pull you guys in this way. Did they seriously feel- holy fucking shit. Are they, like, reduced damage against protagonist? Did you seriously feel your- Come on, combo, combo! Okay, it's a bit too late for that, but whatever. Alright. Inside the wall, part 3. And they're inside somehow. The squadron of shadow officers empty their pistols, but the hooded youth threads nimbly through the hail bullets. Got some Kana and shit right there. Uh, just listen for a second. Watch out! Dodge for dear life. <laughs> With each powerful blow unleashed uh, from the youth's glove fists, another shadow collapses into the blackness and melts away. So they really aren't police. They're shadows. Watch out, master! Danger, six o'clock! Hey! -ya! A group of shadows take aim at you from behind, only to be sent flying by a mighty strike from your new ally's hand. Are you hurt? I'm still one piece. Thanks for saving me there. Think nothing of it. If anything, you're the one to intervene on my behalf. You may call me Jacob. As for who you are, I think I might be able to guess. Of course you are. I'm glad to see I was not mistaken. The man smiles, but his eyes do not seem to be looking at you or focusing at anything at all. Mmm, sorry to be rude, but you can't see, can you? No, not in the same way most others can. I will not bore you with the sad tale behind it, but my eyes are now blind to the light of creation. However, the love within your heart shines as bright as the sun, even to me. I feel the grace and the guidance of the Lord in our meeting here today. Eh, what was that? What's that supposed to? Uh, bullets, bullets! Maybe we can do this later. On my command! The ranks of the shadows stand against you and your companions fall by the minute. 
They train their guns on the outside and once uh, at once they fire. Switching to D mode. D blaster activated. Engaging. Confirming status. Are you safe, Arthur? Ah, uh, he saved me. So, is that gun your sacred artifact? Response. My programming dictates that I solicit protection from others upon being summoned. I concluded that without my intervention, you, my current custodian, would come to harm. Addendum. My directives prioritize data collection over self-preservation. To date, my analysis of enemy motives ha has been inconclusive. Conclusion. I require aid. Corollary. Your safety is vital. Hmm. Alright. Well, I'm glad you helped me. Seeing that the police officers reveal themselves as shadows, they truly are. Their remains from the fleet station as fast as their legs will carry them. All Rolams have escaped, it seems. Good. This is not the place for innocents such as them. Their pleading gazes cried out to me as I passed by, and I fear I may have intervened without thinking. <laughs> so this wasn't planned? You just waved the whole thing? <laughs> Now that takes me back. <laughs> uh, early chapter memories. My pilgrimage follows no one's path. Wherever the wind blows me, wherever my heart guides me, there I will be. Now, I believe we have given our foes some time enough to rally. Shall we give ourselves up? A message just came in from R19. It seems they've turned themselves into the police. Have you no confidence in your plan, strategist of the Summers? Your concern is written across your face. Mm. Surely you know as anyone that braving this danger is, in truth, the safest path. Should your allies continue to fall, the Summers' positions will only grow more unstable. It's hard to believe that this is our best option, but the facts are what they are. It is dangerous to assume anything about a foe holding such an overwhelming information advantage over us. But analysis of what information we do have suggests our enemy is now aiming to pick off the opposition one by one. That leads me to conclude that we summoners are, in fact, not being spared. They are only saving us for after they have plucked the lowest hanging fruit. Indeed. We hesitate at our peril, for the noose will only tighten around our necks. If we would act, now is the time. However, as things are, we are on the back foot. It gals us to admit it. But their military strength greatly surpasses our own. So, what is left for us? If we are powerless, we must convince the powerful to fight for us. Ideally, among themselves. We must not forget that the three true guilds appear to regard each other as their greatest enemies. Furthermore, we have seen for ourselves that none of the three are willing to lay a hand upon our dear warrior. So we're sending our guildmaster into the care of the warmongers to turn them against each other. Oh, I see. That might be a bit smart. Uh, with me in their custody, I, I suppose if that information were to leak out, uh, the other guilds will have no choice, but well, presumably they, they wouldn't want one guild to hold custody, so they would actually directly engage in war with, with the warmongers. True to the name, Claude slips scrolls into a grin fit for a conqueror. Precisely, as matter stands, our three foes all still desire the same prize, but are unable to or unwilling to seize it. Perhaps they have some sort of agreement in place, or past loops advise them to do otherwise, or time is simply not yet ripe. But whatever the reason, if the balance were suddenly tipped in one guild's favor, do you think the others would simply stand by? <laughs> so that's exactly it then. That's a dangerous gamble. If we perfect them too much, there will be no guarantee that Arthur will remain safe. And yet, this is the path you have chosen. Braving and conquering adversity is truly a measure of the hero. Besides, we must not forget that we have our own battles to fight. Neither of us have any intention of leaving the heroics to others while we sit here twiddling our thumbs, do we? Of course not. We're going to fight this war our own way, starting now. Shuichi! 
He's smiling! It's not like I'm a big super fan of Shuichi, but you know, I was definitely concerned about it in the last chapter. <laughs> Apologies for keeping you waiting, Shuichi. I hear you made progress on analyzing this labyrinth. It was designed by Duo to Claude's specifications, I believe. Correct. Honestly, I've only begun to fathom its secrets. It must be the most challenging test my brother has ever given me. Shuichi glances at the small letter D carved into the labyrinth stone wall and smiles forlornly. The symbol recedes into the wall, and with scraping the stone on stone, the dead end transforms into a hidden passageway. However, we anticipate no major issues and plan to commence training as scheduled. So concludes the report. For the most part, Tanatomo's expression stays icy as Yasuyori reads off the report on the day's inmate uh, intake. But the Canisarian does not react as Yasuyori reads off the name R19 Jacob in Arathon. So that is the play they choose. A splendid move. I myself would have been proud of it. If only we could have expelled them from Penitentiary Academy and been done with them before our commander learned of this. Now that we we have been officially commanded to keep the Summoner's Guildmaster under supervision, there's little we can do. Our foes have capitalized on our greatest weakness, the confusion in our chain command. You know, who is the leader of this? There's like Daikaku, and then there's like, uh, Tiskatli Poka, and then who else is Mahata Tata or something? Mahakala, Mahakata, I already forgot. Unintentionally, I'm sure, but they have still made our lives far more difficult. There is also the Replicant. Whether its involvement was planned or not, I cannot say. But it is closely connected to Plan D. So, um, there was a mention of some experiments happening with uh, some particular people from maybe Utopia, I think. Uh, D being the plan uh, for constructed with Duo. I'm not exactly what sh sure what his deal is. And then there was also Plan B for Break. There's also Plan A and Plan C, but I forgot what those deals are too. Uh, all right, maybe it's. Plan Algernon <laughs> and Plan C Ketchy. <laughs> oh no, Ketchy was the villain all along. In any case, we have preparations to make. I am sure the other guilds will have will be already aware of what has transpired here. Our leaders, and indeed all of the world representatives, are all competing for the same prize. The Guildmaster of the Summoners. Now that the prize has fallen into our hands, the others will surely respond. We must be prepared. If we aren't careful. We might find e our, even ourselves the target of the two-pronged assault. We must be particularly vigilant against an incursion from the invaders to the south. Tanatomo chews the end of the closed fan pensively before scrawling in, in exasperation. Ah, there is nothing else for it. I must do this myself. Yasuyori, I leave Penitentiary Academy in your hands until you return. I trust that you'll do nothing reckless, at least until we have consolidated our strategy for the long term. As you command, Counselor, is there anything in particular you would have me do? Hmm, let me see. Ah, yes. Once our trio arrives, have them assigned to Squad 26. <sighs> 26? Wasn't that squad reserved for particularly notorious delinquents? Are you sure about this, Counselor? I cannot. Imagine they will be accepting of new additions. Quite certain. In addition, I would like you to place uh, Squad 26 under your personal command. You may waive the memory recovery procedure for the Summoner's Guildmaster. There is nothing to be gained at present from supplying our enemies with more information. Hmm. Unless I instruct you to the contrary, treat him the same as other inmates. That will be all. Do you have any questions? Please forgive my foolishness, Counselor, but do you mean that I am to monitor them? Yes. We may as well take advantage of having so many individuals of interest gathered in one place. It is a poor substitute of our commander's surveillance network, but it is not for our Counselor to trouble their superiors. I suggest that you be especially vigilant when it comes to the Summoner's Guildmaster. Do not allow him out of your sight, not even for a second. Can I trust you in this? Those two accompanying him present 
their own causes for concern, but I have no one else but you at, to hand. Leave this matter in my care, Count, sir. I swear to you, I will not fail. These summoners never cease to amaze. Who would have thought they would leap so fearlessly into the enemy's jaws? Let alone do it twice. In a thousand lifetimes, I could never have seen it coming. I saw much to learn, it seems. Oh, and Yasuyori. One more thing. He must be tired of hearing this by now, but I will say it regardless. No one, and I mean no one, may be allowed access to the special containment unit in the heart of the academy. Special containment unit. If anyone comes into contact with the individual within, we will all suffer from it. It's probably the energy. <laughs> Special Containment Unit, Penitentiary Academy. Go away! Oh, it's one and only. Okay. Hmm. Well, the events that led you here are still fresh in your mind. You clench your fists in determination. Alright, Frisk. Now it's time for the hard part. We're gonna search this place. And find Mr. Monodobe. I'm starting to see the larger picture. So the one thing they want to avoid, although this could be entirely coincidental, is the entire goal of the summer is to reclaim Monodobe. Of course it's entirely incidental. They actually want Mr. Monodobe. Uh, for their own personal reasons, like, you know, they're the teacher and also in relation to Solomon. Uh, and it seems the warmongers know something about that. Uh, Mononobi's deal. But and I don't think they're actually actively trying to <laughs> break him out because they know it, it would be bad for them. <laughs> 